in the cycle of day and night, where one proceeds along the path of the primordial yoga. Homage to the Master. I pay homage with great devotion of my three gates of body, voice, and mind to all of the masters of the Dzogchen lineage, such as Chengjub Dorji, who encompasses within himself all of the Buddha families, as well as Urgyin Tenzin and Dorji Padron. The primordial Buddha, Shamantabhadra, and the glorious Vajrasattva transmitted the method for proceeding along the path of essence of Atiyogi to Garabdurji, the Supreme Teacher. Desiring to explain a little of the nectar of this teaching, I entreat the Dakinis to grant me their permission. We should always train our minds with the fourfold change of attitude and we should never separate ourselves from that yoga in which we are aware of our own innate presence as being our true master. Continuing with this mindful awareness, without distraction, in the four moments of eating, sitting, walking and sleeping, this is the root of the practice. Certainly, with respect to the day and the night, there does exist a principal daily practice which proceeds as a continuous cycle. And the practice of the day which governs the activities of the three moments, eating, sitting and walking, is comprised of three topics, understanding, stabilizing and progressing in the practice. With respect to the first of these three topics, at the outset we should understand what we have not yet understood. All phenomena which are either seen or heard, however many of them there may be, are like so many false images, even though they appear to be very diverse. Thus, we can conclusively determine that they are merely a magical display of the mind. And the nature of the mind is from the very beginning empty and without a self. Having nothing concrete about it, its aspect which is luminous clarity, is unobstructed and uninterrupted, like the moon reflected on the water. This is that ultimate primal awareness of pure presence within which there is no duality 
of emptiness and clarity. We should understand that this primal awareness is naturally and spontaneously self-perfected. Since we recognize that external appearances are merely ornaments or embellishments of the real condition of existence, appearances which arise to the alertly relaxed six senses are self-liberated into their own condition whenever they arise. And since we recognize that pure presence is just primal awareness as such, manifestations of our passions and karmic traces are self-liberated into their own condition whenever they arise. Since appearances and pure presence are recognized to be inseparable, thoughts which grasp at the duality of subject and object are self-liberated into their own condition whenever they arise. Furthermore, the methods of self-liberation through bare attention, self-liberation upon the arising of thoughts, and self-liberation as such are the means for progressing along the path of practice according to the intent of this yoga. The awareness arising at the first sudden instant of sense contact is indeed that pure presence which arises without correction or modification, and which is uncreated by causes. This very condition of existence, which transcends the limitations of both subject and object, is the authentic self-originated primal awareness of pure presence. With respect to this pure presence, the three aspects of the state of Shamantabhadra are truly complete. Being devoid of any karmic traces, its essence, which is the Dharmakaya, is emptiness. Being devoid of thoughts and concepts, its nature, which is the Sambhogakaya is clarity. Being devoid of any desires or attachments, its energy, which is the Nirmanakaya, is unobstructed and uninterrupted. Such an awareness, in just its coming into being, is entirely devoid of dualistic thoughts which think in terms of subject and object. And so external appearances arise as manifestations of clarity without any grasping at conceptions or judgments. Appearances present themselves in the state of the real condition of existence. Because this unconditioned, natural, instantaneous awareness encounters the real condition of existence as its mother, we speak of it as the Dharmakaya.
remaining in this condition of spontaneously self-perfected pure presence is the natural state of the great perfection. With respect to stabilizing our practice, which is the second topic, we proceed along the path by the way of the three instructions for integrating, for relaxing with presence, and for progressing in the practice. As for the first method, that of integrating, while sitting comfortably and being completely relaxed, we integrate our awareness into the sky in front of ourselves. When we settle thus into an alert, relaxed state, without distraction, and without constructed meditation, this initial awareness, which is like the clear, empty sky, is also a condition devoid of any attachments or grasping at conceptions or judgments. It is just luminous clarity, or just pure presence. And it is similar to a moment of surprised astonishment. This pure presence arises in a bare and naked fashion without duality or distinction between the calm state and the movement of thoughts. While continuing in contemplation, Without falling under the power of either drowsiness or agitation, we find ourselves in a state which is present in profound lucidity and vividness. And with regard to continuing in a state of contemplation, even though we may engage in calling up thoughts, thrusting them aside, causing them to repeat or expanding upon them. They remain in their own condition whenever they arise, without our being distracted and are thus self-liberated. After having attained this state, when we arise from the period of contemplation, the measure of our stability in the practice is our discerning whether or not we are subject to the power of conditioning thoughts. Experiences during meditation arise spontaneously like the rising of the light of the sun or the moon. These experiences such as visions changes in breathing and so on, as they arise are unconditioned by conceptions or judgments. As for experiences which appear after the period of contemplation, we may see all appearances as being illusions, or we may consider every appearance to be empty. We may be capable of remaining in a state of pure presence and it seems that no discursive thoughts arise or we may think we can engage in activities without making any mistakes. As for our entire dimension, because of perceiving external objects and their analysis on the one hand 
and vivid and discursive thoughts, on the other hand, as empty. We thus attain the supreme Dharmakaya, which is the nature of the mind. Since this condition is in no way contaminated by thoughts, characteristics or cognitions, we come to attain a pure primal awareness, unsullied by discursive thinking. Since our obscurations and karmic traces are now completely purified, our passions are no longer out of control. Because this is the case, even though we may be ordinary individuals, we now find ourselves raised higher than all of the realms of samsara. And we are known to belong to the family of the exalted ones, the arhats. As to the instructions for relaxing with presence, whenever appearances arise, in whatever way they may arise, without any correction or modification, we should look upon them as mere ornaments or embellishments of the primordial state itself, which is the real condition of our existence. In that state, our internal pure presence is uncorrected, clear, vivid and naked. Thus, while relaxing alertly with presence, when thoughts arise we relax them into their own condition, just as it is. With respect to the objects of the six sense faculties, when they simply arise as ornaments of the state of presence, in a lucid fashion, without any obstruction, and without any intellectual analysis, then they are entirely perfect, just as they are, as the potency of pure presence, without any grasping after concepts or judgments. Continuing in this state without any duality is said to be relaxing with presence. And while continuing in the period of contemplation, without engaging in any analysis of the objects of the five senses, Appearances are allowed to arise clearly and luminously in an alertly relaxed fashion, without any distraction or grasping after conceptions and judgments. Then, after having concluded a period of contemplation, a primal awareness will present itself, which is based on one or another of the objects of the six sense aggregates. Any such appearances, whether material or immaterial, will seem to have no concrete reality. Whenever discursive thoughts engendered by the five poisons arise, we alertly relax in the face of them, without grasping at concepts or judgments. On the one hand, we should not try to block them with some antidote or transform them by means of some method. 
Since they are neither blocked nor transformed, the passions which arise on the path are self-liberated and a primal awareness is present. Experiences arising during meditation practice manifest as clarity and emptiness. They are found present in a state of vision and emptiness, or in a state of the continuing movement of thoughts and emptiness, or in a state of pleasurable sensation and emptiness, and so on. Thus, there may arise various conscious experiences of the presence of pleasurable sensation, of clarity, and of non-discursiveness, As for our entire dimension, understanding all phenomena as the Dharmakaya, this uncorrected awareness of the state of existence, as it is in itself, is present like a perfect sphere which is uniform, whole and without duality. Because of this, it is said that we have attained the dimension of primordial awareness and a primal awareness of clarity is present. Since objects which we perceive are actually manifestations of the real condition of existence, our passions and obscurations become purified. Because this primal awareness of pure presence is present, we disentangle ourselves from engaging in any sort of negative behavior. And since we have become liberated from our own passions, karmic traces, and obscurities, we are known to belong to the family of the noble bodhisattvas. As for progressing in the practice, which is the third topic to be considered, in an uncorrected, spontaneously self-perfected state, this initial, instantaneous awareness remains present and unmodified. It is a non-discursive, pure presence which is lucid and vivid. Thus, our continuity of awareness remains stable and undistracted. While continuing in a period of contemplation, neither influenced by drowsiness nor by agitation, everything manifests itself as emptiness, which is the real condition of existence. Then, after having concluded a period of contemplation, without being conditioned by thoughts, we should continue in the state of the nature of mind, just as it is, in itself. With respect to experiences during meditation, we find ourselves in a non-dual state, whether we are meditating or not meditating.
All appearances arise entirely as the manifestation of the energy of our contemplation. The real condition of the existence of all phenomena, just as they are, presents itself without moving from the naturally occurring primordial situation. As for our entire dimension, all phenomena, whether visible or invisible, are entirely purified of themselves in the state of the real condition of existence. Therefore, we attain the supreme dimension of non-duality and a supreme primal awareness which is in no way clothed in mental activities is present. Through completely purifying our obscurities to knowledge, we thus attain a knowledge of all phenomena just as they are in the real condition of their existence. Since we are entirely liberated from any duality in relation to the one who understands and that which is understood, we are now known to belong to the family of the omniscient Tathagatas 